Coming up, we take a look at the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife that we can't stop looking at. I get three knives from Apex Alchemy, and we take a look at great camp knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. A uh, couple of my favorite comments from this past week. First, from the uh, the great Paul Munko, knife designer of uh, some of my favorites right here. Thank you so much for the overview video. And that was on the uh, giveaway knife that he anodized. He says... Uh, and another thank you for the comments on the Mystic. Truly an honor to be considered a favorite production piece for that year. Good luck to all who entered in the giveaway. So Paul Monko, the man who uh, did the anodizing on this with uh, his company, Colorful Filth. He is a true artist and, uh, you know, not just knife making and designing, uh, but also this kind of graphic arts uh, has it anodized here on this uh, beautiful titanium and 20 CV 8020. We're going to be talking about this in a second, given to us by Northern Knives, the Knife Junkie, uh, Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife this week. Anyway, uh, this month. So he says, thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm psyched that you're watching the show because, man, I love your work. So it's great to have you here. Got to have you back on the show. Talk about some of the stuff you've been doing recently. My next favorite comment was from the same video about that knife from Will B., uh, a, uh, a favorite on Thursday Night Knives and a gentleman junkie himself. He says, this one is beautiful. My two and a half year old was captivated when this uh, uh, by this one when you showed it on the live stream. And I totally see why, uh, because of that really cool shark and giant squid motif with the diver in peril between them. Uh, that's totally the kind of thing. Well, I'm still going for it, but as a kid, I was so into sharks, so into underwater kind of adventure stories uh, that that knife, man, where was where was that knife 45 years ago? That's what I want to know. All right. Uh, well, all of that said, let us now get to my pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. So as my thumb, which I jacked up pretty badly uh, about 10 days ago, uh, is now coming back online and I'm starting to get some feeling in there. I've had a lot of encouragement from uh, some of the viewers who have also hurt their thumbs, like uh, like uh, Mr. Bull. Uh, thank you, sir. He said it'll, it'll come back online and it's doing so. And part of that has been um, trying to feel things the same way. So I've been carrying this. I carried this one today. This is the LUDT, LUDT from Microtech. But the reason is I wanted to be able to locate the button with my thumb. I mean, I, can, I don't have so much feeling in the tip of my thumb right now. And so I'm trying to train it back. You know, it's like, uh, it's like with, with nursing home patients. Don't let the nursing home patients, you know, make them do everything they can do because if you start doing things for them they will begin to atrophy i'm feeling like it's the same thing with this thumb uh so i got i'm bringing it back into use and not babying it anymore so so today i went for the purple ludt and this is something i never do i went totally 100 matchy matchy today and i never do this just ask my wife drives her nuts today i had the purple jack wolf knives Benny's Jack on me, the purple Kieranite, man alive. This thing is awesome. I've always been a big fan of the Lanny's clip in general. Uh, ben Belkin's version, the Benny's clip, is uh, a really, really great um, update, if you will, with the modern materials and the engineering. And uh, I really loved my first, I really love my first Benny's clip. I did a little dye job, made, customized it, the micarta myself, but man. This Kiranite is just to die for, as they say, as the high society folks say. And when I look at this, I think high society. It's like purple leather curtain, not leather, purple velvet curtains. You're like, is that what they use in high society? Purple velvet curtains. I don't know. Something about this. I don't know. Something about the royalty of purple. There's even a holiness of, of purple. That's another level. But that but purple is a sublime color, right? Uh, even when we talk about unity, we talk about purple in this country. 
uh, blue and red coming together. So I've always loved the color purple. Um, not so much the movie, but this, um, the actual color. So to have it in Kieranite, a classic slip joint material and, and a very early sort of plastic that was used on knives. This, of course, updated Kieranite. I'm sure the recipe has been updated. Man, I love it. Perfectly hafted. Um, it's all like it's one piece here. Of course, with the Jack Wolf knife, you get the amazing action on this new one, this purple Kieranite uh, version. It's got a, a really nice hand rub satin going that horizontal uh, direction. Uh, three other versions of this out there. And coming with this new release of the Benny's clip, uh, Jack Wolf Knives is. Uh, introducing the steel series and uh, it is the same design same build same tolerances same everything different materials you have an integrated uh, integral steel bolster and liner instead of titanium which creates a solid silver back it looks so cool and then 14c 28 and blade steel a blade steel we all know and love and uh, perfectly capable so you can get the Super Luxe Edition now with the S90V blade steel and the titanium and the special handle uh, materials. Or you can go for the Steel Series for $100 less. That's one third less and get 14C28 and still ground super thin, um, still uh, pop, um, uh, grinder satined beautifully. And then stainless steel. Uh, handles with blue micarta it looks like a maritime knife it's beautiful so really really great strategy from jack wolf knives in in offering something um that's easier to afford and i say easier i'm not saying it's inexpensive even the steel series but um it brings it down into a different range that's appreciated of course with jack wolf knives you you get the um leather slip you get the cool uh, tin with the artwork and the fob or not the fob the pog and the cloth and the stickers and you get the whole experience that's part of buying a jack wolf knife now when you get the steel series it's pared down you get it more like a great eastern cutlery which is also really cool it comes in a tube but it comes wrapped up in that really cool wax paper old school i love it okay next on me keeping up with the matchy matchy purple theme yeah, I did it. I went all purple and I had my Nova one. It's not like I don't carry this thing all the time anyway, but I mean, my Agent 001, uh, this is the TKL Knives Agent 001. Um, I have two of them in the double edge and this purple one stays in the sheath that rides horizontally. I have a, uh, a Woodland Burl, that uh, G10 model that goes in the in the waistband version of the sheath that I have. It's very nice. I get to have both of those, and then I have a single edge. <clears throat> but today, of course, it was the purple, 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 purple. I I didn't use it at all. I did draw it and pretend to kill someone a couple of times, uh, but I did not draw it at all. I, I did not use it at all. Lastly, on me for emotional support, I had to go all in. So I went with the purple um, uh, Ritter Hogue Mini RSK Mark One. Um, what a great knife! I. I haven't carried this in a little while. Uh, I, you know, I busted it out when I had Doug Ritter on not that long ago and carried it then. But before that, kind of fell off my radar for a little while. New things come in, uh, new new little obsessions pop up. And, uh, and then it takes a little dive into the archives to find all the awesome stuff uh, you have. Now, that said, my archive is too big and, and I'm looking to pare down. And you're saying, I know, Bob, you say that annually. You, you declare that. And what do you get rid of? Uh, just about nothing. But this time, I mean it. This was my carry. Let me know down below. Do you go matchy-matchy ever? Is it a little, I mean, is it a little too much to have all purple carry? I, I never do this. This never happens to me, I swear. Uh, but this time it did. And I have to say, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So I had the purple LUDT. That's the Gen 2. Now it's the Gen 3, and the reason I got the purple one of that was because when they brought out the Gen 3 and I decided I didn't like it, I I, I knew it was time to get an LUDT uh, uh, model uh, 2 before they were gone, and the only thing I could find was purple. And I was like, I'll live with it, and now I love it. All right. Uh, so next up, I would just want to show this off under the, under the knife cam. I'm going to take off my wedding ring to do so. 
sorry, baby, but everyone knows I'm married. I'm going to do that because I don't want to scratch up the beautiful Anno job on this. This is the Colorful Filth Northern Knives Collaboration Knife. Um, Northern Knives out of Anchorage, Alaska, has done a number of um, collaborations with Paul Monko and Colorful Filth. Uh, he is not only a great knife designer, but he's a great graphic artist. And this anodizing job is by his company and him, Colorful Filth. Uh, as you can see here, it's got a very beautiful, beautifully done anodizing job, but also a really cool theme, this underwater. Of course, this is the titanium and 20 CV version of the Shark Lock AD 20.5 with the shark foot blade from Demco, uh, Demco Knives. So very on theme with the sharks and the merit and the underwater uh underwater theme also blue cerakote with bubbles on that shark foot blade our gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife thank you so much to northern knives and colorful filth for donating this to the channel and to uh, by extension to you gentlemen junkies all you got to do is go to patreon the knife junkie.com slash patreon and sign up and boom you're on the list you have to sign up at the gentleman junkie level. Uh, this thing also does have a pocket clip uh, that it ships with, uh, but you'd be a fool, a damn fool, to put a pocket clip on this because that it would it would definitely mess with that gorgeous anodizing. I suggest you have a custom slip made or find a some sort of leather slip if you're if you're lucky enough to win this and you get this like one of a kind masterpiece uh, to carry. Then splurge a little, treat yourself, find a leather maker that you like and get get some leather made for this so you can carry it and use it and pull it out to impress people. But you're not going to jack it up with a clip <clears throat> and jeans and all that. All right. That's the <clears throat> excuse me, the September gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife, September 19th, 2024. Let's see. Wedding ring. Got to make it sure it's oriented properly going back on. All right, ladies. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, that said, I want to get to uh, just let you know that there's only one way to get this. There's only one way to get this from us, and that's by becoming a patron uh, at Patreon. You can scan the QR code right here, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out what we have to offer. Uh, the, our highest level of support, <clears throat> gentlemen junkie, level of support is, you know, by and large, the most uh, of our patronage is at that level due to the sweet knife giveaways we do every month. So uh, go over, check it out. Um, you don't have to go all the way up to uh, Gentleman Junkie. You could be a traditional junkie or a, a tactical junkie, or, or you could just watch the show, comment, subscribe, um, thumbs up it, and send it to friends. Now, there's a lot of ways to support the show, but the most material way is right here, Patreon. Again, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. Theknifejunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. If I cared to actually do the research, I would look at other enthusiast markets like, say, bicycles or guns or cars. I don't want well, I, I wouldn't have to look at cars. I'm pretty sure about that. But I mean, are there always new products coming out every week in these other enthusiast? We are lucky right now. We are lucky right now if we're knife lovers because every week I've got new knives to report on. This one, the first one here, is one of my favorites from ProTech, the TR3. It's a three and a half inch drop point automatic. It's been one of their bread and butter knives for a long time. Well, they are now fine. I say finally as if I've been waiting for it. I haven't, but it seems like this is low hanging fruit because they are the ones who mastered the button lock first in many, many ways uh, with with the. Uh, with the new port is that what it was called the new port well in any case they have given the tr3 the manual button lock treatment and i'm really excited about this uh so this is what the tr3 looks like minus the thumb studs um traditionally and that button lock would actually be the the button that actuates the blade to come uh you know popping out 
TR3. This is called the TR3 Integrity. That 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 is the name that differentiates it from the TR3 uh, Ordinary Automatic. So that is a new lock and a new mechanism uh, to bring that out. Three and a half inch drop point S35 VN on this blade. Excuse me, an interesting choice in my mind at this point. I, I was thinking, I was assuming they'd go Magna Cut just because it's a, a tried and true knife that everyone loves. And I think it's very, very high up on the on the pro tech in the pro tech panoply so i'm or um uh, uh, parthenon i guess i should say so i'm pantheon geez man it's a p word uh but it, it, i know it's very high up there so i thought they would do magna cut no big deal s35 vn awesome steel thumb studs bearings aluminum deep carry pocket clip this is available they're saying it's going to be available at the end of september or early october so i'm saying early october 2024 Gonna get it, gonna get it, do you like it? Uh, one thing that I like about this better than my automatic, I love my TR3 automatic. Uh, it does have the traditional uh, sort of Benchmade slash Emerson clip on it, so it doesn't go deep carry. This one, I like the look of the deep carry clip on it. So uh, maybe that's a good excuse for me to go out and buy the new TR3 Integrity. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, next up, uh, another from another solid grouping here. This is Boker Knives at it with Bob Terzuola, the great Bob Terzuola, who happy birthday just turned 80 as I record this. Uh, he re he turned 80 the day before I recorded this. So uh, that was what was that Saturday, the 14th of September. Uh, happy birthday to you, Bob Terzuola. Uh, his new uh, Tack Master folder with um, Boker is all Bob Terzuola. Look at that thing. It is awesome. It is a bread and butter knife for him, meaning a four inch, but 3.9 inch blade, Japanese style Tonto with a flipper. Uh, I've seen custom versions of this. I'm not sure if they, if it goes by tack master, uh, but that Japanese style Tonto blade had, well, it's, it looks sort of Americanized to me because it does have a sort of secondary point, but the real point is it is a compound grind here and you have a lot of a lot more beef behind the edge on the straight portion and then about a third of the way down the blade towards the tip it goes to a thinner grind interesting choice oftentimes we see it in reverse uh, but i like this especially if you're using that tip to slip into stuff or uh to um do any sort of utility cut this is a tactical knife though for sure beautiful liner lock with the with the subdued green micarta that's a nitro v blade uh with an acid stone wash very beautiful this one i might have to get a, he's got this he's got the new fox atcf and then he's got the protec uh atcf one of these i have to get because i don't have a bob t in my collection whether it's a collaboration knife or a custom, I don't have anything from him. And I should. I mean, my moniker is the knife junkie. So uh, this one coming out in October 2024. Okay, next up from Benchmade. It's a new gold class. A new gold class knife uh, from their uh, version of their latest uh, Bally song, the Necron. And this actually, this knife has not even been out for a year as I'm recording this, and they're already doing a gold class version of it. It must mean that it's popular, but man alive, it's a beauty. Now, I'm going to address the blade first. They're calling this a Weehawk blade. And I remember, I've never heard anyone ever use the term Weehawk blade except Benchmade. And they used to use that name on a blade style that was very different from this. To me, this is a clip point or a Dow. Oh, no, it's not even a Dow. This is a clip point blade. And they're calling it a Weehawk. If you look at their old, older um, uh, uh, 800 series, I guess, Ballet Songs, their Weehawk blade. Now, I know there are people out there who know Benchmade and Ballet Songs better than I. So if, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But their Weehawk blade looked more like a bayonet grind. Right. It was a drop point with a with a large swedge that came halfway up, maybe clip point ish in profile, uh, but it didn't look anything like this. Anyway, uh, I'm getting in the weeds now. Uh, this new gold class, they're coming out with two versions of it, of the Necron. And um, 
it, it they will both have that 4.6 inch i love it 4.6 inch that's the traditional length or anywhere from four and a half to 4.25 inches uh traditional length on a ballet song proprietary damasteel two different t uh, types of damasteel patterns they're making for this and for benchmade exclusively this knife also has tungsten weights at the end i think you can kind of see them there uh, those silvery tips at the end can be removed and this is a clipless ballet song so this is for the ballet ballet song flippers um, it does not clip shut you would want a little leather sheath or something to put this in uh, this is a, a connoisseur's ballet song also a benchmade connoisseur's knife for sure because uh, these are going to cost you a pretty penny uh jungle wear and lava flow fat carbon on these what you're looking at there is the fat carbon the other one was the jungle wear these are available now uh so no time to save up just uh just go into debt and get this knife um i don't recommend that uh lastly here is from k-bar and these are pretty cool uh these are some solingen made kitchen knives uh solingen germany known for their uh well known for their steel historically but also they have a lot of great kitchen knives coming out of solingen these days so i can see why k-bar would collaborate in that direction look at this this is their nine inch chef's knife uh this series is also coming out with a seven inch santoku uh, japanese utility knife with a with a a nice curve in it uh like uh, it's curved even more than the usual santoku so that's kind of a cool thing uh so these are um four uh, these are coming out in 1.4116 steel oh thank you jim that's the santoku it's got a nice uh, 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 uh an exaggerated uh, curve up on the spine and that adds to the belly of the blade for nice rocking cuts and as you can see here and as you noticed on the last one yes this does have that same barrel shaped handle uh as uh, as the classic a combat classic k-bar usmc fighting knife pretty cool except that one is a rat tail tang and stacked with stacked leather handle this is a full tang with micarta slabs but they're still kind of emulating that that rounded shape um this one is available now I check uh, both of them this one and the and the nine inch chef's knife uh do check it out and if you do leave a comment i want to know how the circular handle will feel on a chef's knife and maybe they make it more of an oval for this but uh yeah let me know all right coming up uh we are going to uh get to the state of the collection we have some really cool things that have come in um from well from some familiar names uh, but before we get there i want to do a call out to knife makers i know not a lot of knife makers watch this show and and the uh, interview show and i just want to say if you're out there and you want to create a new store for yourself uh we can help uh, there is a an alternative to shopify now i don't know if you know this but shopify is a woke canadian company and um, you might be a woke canadian and that's all good you might be canadian and 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 cringing at your current state of your country current leadership we're doing the same thing down here but if you want to bring your uh your shopping cart experience uh you knife makers or anyone else uh into an american company that's not gonna you know if it's legal you can sell it with this company it's called launch cart that's where we um sell our stuff that's how we sell our stuff this is something jim uh, takes a lot of pride in and passion in researching and finding out the best options, especially the best USA options. And he's done so here with LaunchCart, and we've been happy with it, very happy with it so far. So if you're out there and you have a store, it's with Shopify or another foreign company that maybe doesn't approve of your activities, you know, uh, Shopify thinks they're your moral better and they're going to tell you. Uh, what you can and can't do. So um, if you're cool with that, well, then stick with Shopify. But if you want something great and something American and something that's not going to be up your rear end the whole time, check out Launch Card. Go to theknifejunkie.com slash launch. That's kind of our affiliate way in. And uh, we can help you there. So do check it out. We're, we're psyched about it. Okay, coming up, state of the collection. We're going to take a look at some great knives from Billy. If you know who Billy is, you'll be excited to see this. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion 
Featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp, crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. The KnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So I was referencing Billy, and I meant Billy Ford of Apex Alchemy. If you're um, in the online knife world right now, you know who he is. And he has begun making knives, and he sent me three of them. And this is the first one that arrived, and I really like it. It's called the Raptora. And uh, this one is, let's see, I have the specs. I gotta, I gotta, I have to reference the specs because I know he takes uh, a lot of care in these knives and I want to get them right. But this, this one is, uh, <laughs> I think I'm about to mess it up. 5160. This is the Raptora. 5160. It is uh, hollow ground and heat treated to uh, 61. Uh, HRC. It's got a crown spine, beautiful Terra tough handles. I love this sort of teal color with white liners and it's ergonomic it feels so good in hand and um it's a very exciting example of the work that that billy ford is doing um i'm really liking the design in that it's got that downward uh, raked edge which as you pull it through materials is going to accelerate the cutting it's a very sharp knife i've only uh, so far uh uh, sheared paper with it, uh, but I am going to be doing a video of this and the other knives I'm going to be showing you. I'm, I'm going to, I have permission to do other stuff with it. Uh, but this Raptora, it's kind of an EDC. I would call this a definitely an EDC knife. Uh, I think with a nice sheath, especially with the angle from the handle to the blade, I could see this in the three or four o'clock position in the waistband, uh, pointing edge forward, and it would be so incredibly comfortable. And then, of course, easy to draw. And then you'd have it in this reverse grip. And I know it's not a self-defense knife, but of course it could be. Um, maybe take a little bit off that, that, and yeah, you got a self-defense knife. Uh, but really, really impressed with this. And then I got another package from him, at, which further impressed me very much. Okay, this first one I'll show you is, um, look at that beauty. So this is his amygdala, amygdala model. And it is a beautiful and like very solid, you know, you get a knife in hand and you think this is solid or you can think this is heavy. This, I feel like it's solid and not heavy, but I would easily go to town on, you know, anything with this because it, it, it feels so solid. Anyway, uh, this is 5160 and it is really nicely hollow ground here and you've got a beautiful uh, patina on it and this swirly red and black handle so this is this was water jetted if that's the proper way to proper past tense water jetted and then it was ground and heat treated this bevel was ground and heat treated by brad vice uh, he's a knife maker i'm unfamiliar with but i have to get familiar with him because it, he did a beautiful job on this one um, so this is the the design is by Billy Ford of Apex Alchemy, uh, but he had Brad Weiss make it. And this is the version um, that is this is that version. And I'm going to show you another one of this very same knife. But man, it feels so good in hand. I really like this. I'm going to take this outside. I, I don't think this one. I think this one I'm leaving pristine. I think the next one. I'm about to show you. I'm going to baton some wood and do some carving and even some food prep. I, I want to do a little video where I cook something outside because I've been watching videos of people cooking outside. And I'm like, that looks fun. Okay, next, this is the amygdala. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, the amygdala that he, that Billy Ford made himself in Jed Hornbeak's shop. So with the with the uh, with the watchful eye of Jed Hornbeak. And it's funny because I have the same cryptek uh, material same color on my jed hornbeak knife but so uh, made under the watchful eye of jed hornbeak by billy this amygdala is pretty impressive um first of all sheath we're gonna turn it this way oh look at that so you've got a higher flat grind on this right that's flat yeah higher flat grind on this and this one is 80 crv2 
And this is uh, the handle is mycarta amygdala right here in the uh, tang. And then when you flip it over, what does it say here? ADCRV USA B Ford. So on the spine, you get some of that markings there. That's very cool. So beautiful knives. Billy, congratulations. You're doing beautiful work. And uh, it doesn't just look good, but it feels good in hand. And I can tell uh, this is going to be a great camp style knife, a great outdoor knife, a great do everything knife. And I like both very much. Actually, it's kind of I've been vacillating back and forth as to which one I like more. Um, but I, I don't have to decide because neither of them are mine. So uh, when it comes time to get one myself, I'll have it done the way I want it. But uh, I really, really really like these and uh by the way this one you see more of a peak on the pommel that's this is the one made in jed shop and this is definitely a six finger knife for me uh if i had six fingers six or seven it's got a nice long handle i mean i i can get and i i would venture to say most people can get a full hand grip on the back like this uh, but you got that choil up there. So you have options. If you're using this outdoors and you want to chop, you got a little uh, lanyard here. You can go three fingers with this and get a lot of leverage. Um, so I'm very impressed with uh, Apex Alchemy's work. And um, um, I can't wait to see where it goes from here. But I also really can't wait to get outside with it and uh, just do a little banging around in the backyard with this so thank you billy for entrusting these to me it's uh it's my honor to to check them out and um i look forward always i look forward to to checking out new knives but when they come from um people that i already know from this community who have decided to start making knives uh, it's even sweeter uh, so all right well i was talking about those as great camp knives and that's a great segue into this uh list of great camp knives and this is not my ordinary bread and butter i much prefer or collect i'm more fascinated by tactical knives combat knives and swords and weapons knives as weapons these here of course uh, that i'm about to show you all could be used as weapons just as this could be or this could be or a hammer or a, you know a car so these are not made as weapons so I'm going to get that out of the way. Not made as weapons, could flex into weapons easily and be, be awesome at it. These are knives that uh, do at, that excel at um, across the board chores. So whether you're um, uh, making steaks for your tent or you're cutting down saplings or you're preparing your camp meal, uh, these all excel at that. And full disclosure, uh, there are a couple of them I have never used for any of that, uh, one or two, but I surmise that they would be good for it. Uh, also, um, I have not used these all to cook with. A couple of them I have, um, you know, so for what that's worth. They're not all great slicers of tomatoes and cheese is what I'm saying. All right, first up here, we have the Cold Steel SRK. Uh, the SRK Survival Rescue Knife. This is a classic cold steel, and um, it's been well, it's been made for a long time. But it's it's one of those knives that has been in everyone's hands, uh, including the Navy SEALs and including out outdoorsmen for survival. Um, this one is pretty damn old, and you know that it's old because it says "Made in America" on the blade. So this is carbon V or carbon five, made in America. Uh, an inexpensive knife, you know, they do a couple of different versions of this knife. Right now, I think the inexpensive version is SK5, and then they'll do a 3V version of it, and then they do a mini version of it, and one that's coated, one that's not. I mean, this is just a, a, a winner knife for them. And why is that? It's because it's got a, a very neutral five and a, a three quarters inch clip point blade. The blade has a long, uh, straight area that you can work with on that edge. But then it's got the belly up here, and then it's got a center line point with a zero ground swedge. When it's coated like this with the black traction coating like this, uh, it, it takes a little bit of the sting out of that zero ground edge. But we know from cold steel clip point blades where they take the swedge all the way down to a zero point, it gets sharp, uh, especially on impact. So that is one drawback that people 
uh, have or one hesitation people have about uh, batoning with cold steel clip points because they have a very sharp clip and it'll ruin your baton. I say don't get so precious about your baton and then you're fine. Um, this has the grivery handle for great grip, a single quillion allowing your thumb to come up and fully rest on the on the back of the blade without dealing with anything up here. So, uh, you know, to get in the way, uh, this is like a great knife and this would flex easily into fighting. Now, I'm not going to bring that up every time, but, uh, you know, with that swedge and with its length, um, you know, just under six, right? Yep. Just under six inches. Um, it's a, it's a great size for everything. Also, uh, a, a little bit of, of a Coke bottle handle when you turn it on its side like this, but all in all, very nice and squared off. I bought this one in 2005 when my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, but we were uh, on the way. Uh, she had to go to London uh, for an extended time. She went there for about a year. And so I made her a whole getaway kit, and that was in it. And I'm sure that knife is incredibly illegal in Great Britain. But I figured the only time it would come out is uh, in a shit-hit-the-fan scenario and you know, who cares at that point? All right, next up, this one, I have sort of inspired this category, this and another one we're going to see downstream because uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times. I've been watching a lot of videos, mostly about hobos, but, you know, how do you survive on very little? Say you just, you have a can of soup and you want to cook it over a fire. How do you make the fire? How do you make a little st stove for it? You know, how do you make a little, um, what do you say, like it, a way to eat? out of it you know how do you make a, a bowl all that kind of stuff it's fast fascinating to me and so i've been noodling around in the backyard making cowboy coffee that's my thing now uh, i make cowboy coffee and it makes me feel like i'm actually doing something out in the wild uh i know i know it's suburban dad stuff but hey it's what i can do right now um but one knife i i've been liking making tinder out of making tiny little slivers that go in my uh go in my little folding stove um is this knife so this is the boon 2 this is the uh, bark river knives boon 2 you've heard me wax poetic about this knife for a long time this is the this is the pre-war camp knife that turned into the k-bar this is the knife that 1930s dads had on their on their uh, belts when they were camping you know i have all these uh, sort of little uh things stories built into this knife because it's just so classic looking and it's a great representation of it because it's made by bark river a company i love and whose work i trust and so it's been it, it's been a safe queen so to speak for years and then well actually that's not true this used to be a lawn mowing knife and it would cut the occasional vine or that kind of thing uh, but it's come back out of storage and is getting use uh, as a little batoner and as a little carver. And I'm really liking it. Not that little. It, this also has a uh, five and three quarters inch, almost six inch blade. Five and something, six eighths or something like that. <laughs> It's right there, right there. But a classic stacked leather handle. Uh, this is their antique leather handle. They sort of blacken it as if it's been in your hands for years. A stacked leather with that aluminum pommel. Different versions of this knife came out. It came out with a sort of sculpted Moran-shaped handle. Uh, I'm not fond of that on this knife. This is the perfect iteration of this knife. And this knife with its apple seed edge is just great for wood processing and other camp chores. Beautiful, beautiful leather sheath also in keeping with Bark River Knives. They do great leather sheaths. All right, next up, this one is from Off Grid Knives. They've got a lot of knives that would fit in this category. Actually, there's another one that I'll be showing you later. But this one is their version of the Kephart, and it's their second version of the Kephart. This is the Off Grid Knives Ridgeback fully flat ground. Now, I also have uh, the... Um, a Scandi version of this, which is also nice, but totally different knife. It's got a different balance. Obviously, there's a lot less weight on the blade here because it's fully flat ground, meaning if you put it in cross section, it is a continuous wedge from just behind that cutting edge to the spine. Whereas with the uh, Scandi ground version, it's, it's flat bar stock 
blade stock all the way to the edge and then you take a sharp uh, turn towards the edge so you get a lot more meat in the uh, in the blade and a different balance uh, this one I think he came back out with this you know doing it fully flat ground I I think uh, Kerry who's he's gonna be coming back on the show sometime soon I think he he made the right decision in paring it down making it lighter making it fully flat ground I feel like this is a more universally useful knife um, the other one was is great. Uh, the other uh, Ridgeback, I used that in one video up here to to cut down a couple of saplings. One, it was great just for chopping right through it. The other one, I did that thing where you bend it and you just sort of rock it uh, on there. And then I did some carving. That is a great knife. I'm not belittling the other one, but I just love this Ridgeback full flat ground. And then when you get to camp and you're uh, done carving your steaks and um for your tent and doing whatever kind of other chores you're going to do with this wood processing and such this would be great for that with that wedge shape then you turn it to cooking and you've got a full flat ground blade it's not that thick it's going to do great in cutting up any sort of food uh you're going to have at the campsite so this one is awesome also comes with a great kydex sheath all uh, <clears throat> off-grid knives and come with excellent sheaths very positive snap you've got this dangler belt dangler that you can uh, use or you can just get a different uh, tech lock or something to put on there um, that's the ridgeback full flat ground from off-grid knives next one is low-hanging fruit uh, it is the mora companion um, this one i got in germany when i was uh, visiting my wife's cousins we were there last november and um, my wife's cousin works uh, adjacent to the air force or with the air force i guess as a civilian and we were on base and we went to the px and this was there and i bought it <laughs> and i've always wanted a mora companion i have the mora um the old red handled one like their second model they ever put out and i love it but i always wanted an updated one and the companion is the one that speaks to me i know that garberg is pretty cool looking too but this one to me has always seemed like a universal do everything knife and lo and behold, it is. It's got a four and a half inch um, blade of Swedish stainless. So let's assume it's maybe in the 14C area because I know the, the 14C and 12C27 were created for bushcraft uh, knives. So maybe that's what this is. Uh, you've got a nice rubbery handle that feels great uh, in hand, a clip point, and then a true Scandi edge. So flat bar stock until you get to that uh edge and then it descends right to the edge no no um extra cutting edge there just just that scandy grind and so great for carving really really excellent for carving but this is also really good for making tinder again it's with wood that's not as you know you're not spanning i guess whatever you can span with this blade this does very well with uh uh, with batoning, but I haven't done it for anything that big. I've used it for uh, making tiny little matchstick kindling uh, for my little my little rocket stove thing. Uh, so fits great in hand. Also, um, as as related to me by Ed Calderon, they make fantastic fighting knives. Um, you don't think of more knives because they're so friendly and uh, utilitarian, but they make outstanding fighting knives because they've got great ergonomics. Grippy handles will stay in that are neutral will stay in your hand. You can flip them around for this sort of pickal grip or or whatever. Super sharp and acute, I mean, acute enough point, but strong enough point because for you know thrusting and penetrating because of that scandy grind. More companion comes in a number of colors. Great sheath, clips right on. These things are awesome and very inexpensive. All right, kind of in the same, you know, keeping with the same sort of theme, this next one, uh, BRS knives, or B, I'm sorry, BPS knives out of Ukraine are really uh, pretty amazing and, and inexpensive and have that same sort of use case as the Mora. Now, they've expanded. I see they're now making a, um, a Ray Laconico design, uh, a tactical fixed blade knife designed by Ray Laconico. That is really cool and i'm excited to see this because this is a ukraine a ukrainian company it's a father and son 
um, making these very, very nice and affordable um, knives. And it's cool to see that they're they're expanding. Uh, so they have a larger model line than when they sent this to me. And um, it and they're doing a design collaboration with the, one of the greatest. So that's very exciting. I'm keeping it in the sheath just to show you how amazing this full grain leather sheath is. I would love to have, uh, maybe it's too thick for a jacket, but yeah, I'd love to have like a vest made out of this or something. Very nice, supple, but thick leather. Beautiful uh, welt construction here. And I like the white stitching. BPS logo on there. A dangler sheath, or you could just use the uh, belt loop if you want it higher up. All right. Now I have this cheesy lanyard on here. I say it's cheesy because when I <clears throat> intentionally put lanyards on, I make them look nicer. This is just a hollowed out piece of 550 cord that I put on there because it was very tight in the sheath when I got it. And it only uh, presents a small amount of handle to grab. Uh, but this is the HK5. And uh, I got to say, I forgot about it until I started this list and and this is coming back out with this is coming into uh full backyard rotation backyard commando rotation for me um <clears throat> backyard survivalist i guess uh so you have a really nice scandy ground blade this one is uh a f i'm gonna measure it i got the ruler out may as well five inches i guess hk5 would belie that a uh, very slight clip point you can see if i if i silhouette it against the black sheath and very nicely done blade it's wickedly sharp i've stropped it a million times not a million times but i've stropped it to get it even even sharper but i mean it showed up like a razor now uh it's got a crazy steel not that crazy it's high carbon 1066 ever heard of 1066 i have not uh, untreated handle is nice too because you can do whatever you want with it um i haven't done anything with it but i might just dye it or uh, not dye it but uh stain it maroon or something like that if i'm bringing it back out and i'm going to start using it uh, but it's very comfortable very very ergonomic when i first got it since they were totally unknown to me i i believe i put a video out where i was doing some stuff batoning with it and carving with it but really really excellent knife and uh um I'm very happy that I have this uh, because it, it was not on my radar until they sent it. And I've seen a bunch of other people now um, showing them off too. Uh, this has a 90 degree spine. Great for throwing sparks off your ferro rod. So an excellent outdoor knife in the BPS HK5. All right. Next one is one that I carried a long time uh, just doing my chores. And um, I love this one. This is the Tops Tex Creek. And this is an example of a lanyard that I spent a little more time with, put a cool knot on it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll show it again in this knife, a great leather pouch style sheath. I think that this is kind of uh, an important thing in these kind of knives that you can pull, take them out of the sheath, drop them back in the sheath without having to fuss too much or without having to deal with uh, uh, a uh, too much of a stiff retention. Here on, on, the, on the Bark River, you pull this up, the tab and it it settles back behind that little notch there so you can use it take it in and out take it in and out without having to worry about this then when you're done you can just clip it back down so that's a great alternative these kydex sheaths by uh cold steel and off grid are great the the mora knife is great it's form fitting it drops right in and then these leather pouch sheaths are great too for the same reason um just a working knife uh, weapony knives need more retention. They're pulled out less. Uh, they're used less, and you don't want it falling out. But this, you're using it a lot. You're 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 choring with it, so you're gonna be doing this, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in. The Tex Creek. I got this knife originally to practice Kydex, uh, making Kydex on. And actually, I made a really great Kydex sheath for this one. I'm very uh, inconsistent with my Kydex. This one, the one that I did for this happened to be excellent. Um, and it was the very same Kydex uh, sheet that I made my um, uh, Prather war buoy sheath from. So maybe it's that <laughs> sheath that was, maybe I just had it, uh, had a, a lucky piece there. But this Tex Creek 1095 blade steel, it's got a, um, I can't remember what the wash, acid rain wash on it. Oh, no, no, this was gray traction coating. 
and you can see how it's worn away because it's gotten a lot of use. This one, I remember I was chopping at some vines over um, by a back fence and I nicked a steel piece of the fence and put a chip in this. It sharpened out very nicely. I think you can see a little bit of it right there. But in doing so, I put a little smile on the blade. Um, very, very, very nice blade for anything. Um, but wood carving, that kind of thing, you could uh, you could baton with this pretty nicely. I think I have in the past. Um, and you've got a, a nicely sized handle um, on this four and a, and a quarter or four and a half inch. Now I'm speaking out of school. Four and a quarter inch blade uh, and a nice sized handle. So you can you can get a lot of different grips on this. I know I've used this like when I put the ding in it. I had the lanyard around my my wrist and was doing this kind of thing. So um, this kind of chopping motion. So an excellent one. They make this in an XL version, which has the same handle, just a much bigger blade. And then they have a, what is it, 30th or 40th or 20th anniversary edition? I guess 20th. Tops hasn't been around that long. Uh, very great knife. I love this thing. All right, next up, very great knife. Uh, next, next one is one that has got a lot of use. Uh, I've had this kind of the whole time we've been in this house, which is 13 years, I think something like that. And, uh, this one used to get a lot more use than it does now, but I still love it. And this is another one that's been essentially reprofiled because of the dings I put in it. We had a giant hedgerow in the back of our house when we moved in here. And uh, we hated it, took a while, but I got to it and I got rid of it. And really, it was this knife uh, that did most of the work, this knife. And and um, I had a whole bunch of stuff out there, as you could imagine. I had a, a hatchet and an axe, uh, one of those, uh, you know, uh, limb snippers and a bunch of stuff. I kept coming back to this. Uh, something about this knife just really really did the trick now i have a screamingly wicked edge on here right now i had to reprofile this uh, also because of chips uh, this is 1075 blade steel uh, made by condor in el salvador based on the hudson bay knife uh, the hudson bay tra uh, company was a company that had trappers all over the, the all over western canada or all over canada in general but um this pattern knife was what came out of uh, that trapping era in the 19th century seven in the 18th and 19th century centuries so very neutral handle clip point blade uh, but it's kind of set up more like a butcher knife where the blade is broader than the handle and the blade itself becomes your guard um, uh, so kind of butchery knife kind of outdoors knife kind of fighting knife this knife does it all and for me, I know that it would make an outstanding camp knife because um, if you can take a whole ed hedgerow out with this and also, you know, it'll baton all day long and you don't have a swedge, sharpened swedge to worry about on this clip point. Um, I highly recommend the Condor Knives Hudson Bay. They also make a mini Hudson Bay, which would be cool to have. Uh, I don't have this. This was a gift from a friend many years ago, and uh, I still love it. Still gets a lot of you. Well. Hasn't gotten a lot of use in a long time, but has gotten a lot of use. I guess I'll be bringing it out now. Make myself an honest man. I did a little bit of uh, form fitting on that leather sheath there. Didn't take. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, one of my favorites in this list. This this has uh, multiple uses too. This is another off-grid knife. This is the second version of their Grizzly. So the Grizzly V2 in its awesome kydex sheath they do great sheaths pops right off it would shoot off the table if i let it but look at this this kind of looks like a hudson bay knife like the one we just had out an extreme clip point or cleaver style blade i'll call it a clip point though um you got a very broad blade that's the cleavery part of it but this and your point gives you a clip point so this is uh a knife that they market at off-grid knives as a camp kitchen knife so this is primarily for food prep while you're camping and uh so we take this uh to our to our mountain place 
it's not our mountain place. It's a place we share. Um, and they have a kitchen, you know, uh, but the cheesiest knives. So I always bring this one, a great knife in the kitchen. Actually, it would make a great knife in my home kitchen. I just have too many knives up there uh, to, to, to integrate this. But uh, what do I love about it? It's already thin blade stock. It's super broad at two inches broad and it's fully flat ground. So it's wicked thin behind the edge. It's very, very slicey. It is a great knife in the kitchen. Plus the, the height of it keeps your knuckles way off the cutting board. And then the width of it and all of this surface area is great for picking up your ingredients to drop in the pan or drop in the pot or whatever you're uh, cooking in. So this is just a great, great, great knife. Uh, I love it. I highly recommend it. And I really like this second version of it better than the first. The first was great too and got a lot of use until we got this. And then that one's kind of been um, relegated further back in the drawer, but, um, the older one had a square, more squared off handle with ridges and, um, it was not fully flat ground. Maybe it was, I don't know, but there were some differences and I really like what they've done here, mostly with the handle contouring. This one here is 14 C 28 N. Uh, the first off grid I showed you earlier, the ridge back, the Kephart fully flat ground Kephart is a uh, cryo treated D2. Okay, second to last in this list is one that I've been carrying ever since I got it. I, I carry this knife a lot, way more than I expected. I mean, way more. This is the Knives by Nuge Primitive Wicket. I had Tom Nugent on the show. Uh, he's a New Jersey knife maker. I know that's not something you hear too often, but he's a New Jersey knife maker and an outdoorsman. And uh, if you don't know New Jersey, you might not know New Jersey has a lot of very beautiful, natural, and wild places. Uh, people think of Trenton, people think of Newark, uh, people think of Elizabeth when they think of New Jersey oftentimes, the more industrial uh, urban settings in New Jersey, uh, or you think of sprawling suburbs, but there are a lot of beautiful wild places. Uh, Tom Nugent has found them and he goes camping in them frequently, and that's what uh, inspired his line of knives. And this wicket, this is the primitive wicket because it doesn't have a micarta or a G10 handle, it's wrapped in jute. Um, this primitive wicket is a great uh, scandy ground outdoors knife, but it fits so nicely around the neck, super light and thin. This is truly one that I forget I have on me until I need it uh, because it's so light and thin. And um, it, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, the jute, even with this jute, which is kind of inherently scratchy or grippy, it feels good next to the skin. Like I can wear this one without having to put it over a t-shirt, which is how all my other neck knives have to have to fly. There's his logo. It's a campfire. And uh, I used this to baton and, uh, you know, I only what it could span. I had already split the thing up, uh, but this is great for that. This is great for that. Um, you know, making kindling and stuff uh, because of that wedge shaped edge there. So I love this knife. I think you should check out new uh, knives by Nuge. If you are in any way interested in the outdoors and you like outdoors knives, this is ADCRV CRV uh, too. He, he just makes some really cool stuff. It's reasonably priced for custom handmade fixed blade knives. And um, I, I just think you'll like it. I couldn't recommend it more. Um, and, and then also I, this might have to do with why it's so comfortable instead of paracord, uh, he uses leather and then this little, uh, this little clip up here. So if it gets caught, a lot of people don't like neck knives because they feel like if they're walking through the woods and the paracord gets caught on something and then they slip over a cliff, they're going to hang themselves with it. Or if they get in a fight, someone's going to use it as a noose. Uh, so if you're worried about that, which I'm not, um, but if you are this will break away and uh, you won't you won't suffer any uh, anything around the neck from that great sheath too by the way all right lastly this is the most tried and true i'm sure you know what's coming the most tried and true knife in my entire collection uh, bar none really is this this is the cold steel trailmaster and this one has to be at this point 25 years old, I'm going to say. And that's 
no, this has got to be more like 30 years old. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm dating it by the girlfriend <laughs> at the time. I know that sounds terrible, but uh, uh, me and that uh, uh, that person uh, got, who, who was a nice person and everything, uh, I just never talk about ex-girlfriends. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up is because we, we got in a misadventure with this. And uh, uh, this was on our, our my belt. We got lost. And this is basically... Uh, the thing that that made me feel like we were going to get out alive. Never had to use it, uh, but it, we were in the dark, lost in the woods, and had to go several miles to get back to where we were going. Had no idea where we were. No flashlight. This was before I was an EDC guy. This was long before. This was just when I was just a knife guy and uh, you know had saved up to get this and thought it was impressive. How cool is it to be hiking with a guy who's got this on his belt? Well... Wouldn't it be cooler to have a, a guy who can at least make a torch or has a flashlight and can get us out of the woods without being stalked? I felt like we were being stalked by a mountain lion or something. Um, but now that I'm older and wiser, it was probably a Sasquatch. All right, let's end it right there. Uh, these are my favorite camp knives. What are yours? Let me know down below. Uh, Mora Companion has to be on there. If you like the Mora Companion, check out the BRS uh, knives, the HK5. They have other smaller knives. Or uh, check out Condor or Off Grid. These are all great companies. And of course, I mentioned Knives by Nuge. And he is a custom knife maker who makes great camp knives um, that are worth saving up for or that many of us can afford right off the bat. So check all those out and uh, be sure to join us on Saturday. I mean, on Sunday for a great interview. We got some really cool ones coming up and uh, uh, some people I'm very excited to talk to. Um, so do join us then. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.